Well, let's get some reaction now from the Palestinian side. And I'm joined by Omar Barghouti. He's a Palestinian human rights activist and co-founded the Boycott Divestment Sanctions Movement, BDS, which calls for governments and corporations to cut economic ties with Israel. He joins me now from the occupied Palestinian city of Acre. Omar, thanks so much for joining us. us uh, most everyone is calling this a symbolic victory for Palestinians that will actually change little if nothing on the ground. So can real change only come through organizers like you pushing for boycotts and sanctions that will leave the average Israeli actually feeling some pressure? Uh, actually, just as in the struggle against apartheid in South Africa, uh, UN resolutions are very important, but they don't have teeth on their own without human rights activists, people of conscience around the world, pushing corporations, pushing governments, pushing churches, institutions to cut their ties of complicity with Israel's regime of occupation, settler colonialism and apartheid. The BDS movement, started by the absolute majority of Palestinian civil society in 2005, is today having a strategic impact on Israel's regime of oppression, as Israel recognizes. But you say that, however, the numbers that are published actually show that the economic impact being felt uh, through your organization is so minimal that many Israelis can actually laugh it off. Uh, not quite, actually. Uh, foreign direct investment in Israel in 2014 dropped in comparison to 2013 by some 46%. Uh, th this was due to two main factors, BDS and Israel's massacre in Gaza. 7% uh, was the drop of Israeli exports in 2015. Israeli economic analysts said BDS played a, a role in that. So we're not having a, a, an intense impact on the Israeli economy, but Israel recognizes culturally and to an extent economically, its isolation at the grassroots, at the civil society level, is growing to a very alarming rate. And this is why Israel is fighting BDS as, quote, a strategic threat of the first order. I'm wondering, though, how much you fear then the... Uh, we know how strong the United States influences in Israel and in the Palestinian conflict in itself. And with this change in regime and knowing now that a new president um, who's very interested in what looks like protecting Netanyahu's interests specifically will be coming to power in a month's time, where do you think that leaves your cause? Uh, I think the Obama administration for eight years has done a lot protecting Israel's regime of apartheid and occupation. In eight years, we've seen nothing but deep, deep complicity from the United States. $38 billion in military aid was signed just a, a few months ago. So the Obama administration was not exactly pro-justice. It was a very pro-apartheid, pro-occupation uh, administration, yet it had a mask of liberalism, of, of supporting the rights. Uh, Trump drops this mask and shows U.S. policy uh, in its nakedness as totally biased to protecting Israel's regime of oppression. Palestinians, uh, unlike our unelected leadership, our corrupt leadership, do not rely on the U.S. administration. We rely on mobilizing public pressure from the grassroots up, influencing major mainstream churches, trade unions, and civil society organizations to pressure this decision makers. That's the only way we can finally impose sanctions on Israel uh, after a lot of boycotts and divestment have achieved uh, uh, attraction at the grassroots level. Okay. Omar Barghouti, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us from Acre in the uh, occupied territories. Let's